Welcome back to the lectures on uh, introductory quantum chemistry and molecular spectroscopy. This is probably the last lecture on the quantum part, quantum chemistry part in this course and uh, the idea for this lecture is to give you some general account of uh, elementary quantum mechanics however, but using the notion of operators, commutators and eigenvalues and eigenvectors. You have heard quite often in the course so far mentioning operators and also commutator, but I have so far avoided the use of the term eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So towards the second half of this lecture, I shall indicate why they are important for the course on quantum mechanics. In fact, we will realize later that the Schrodinger equation, the time independent Schrodinger equation H psi is equal to E psi is actually an eigenvalue equation. We okay? will see that and we will see the connections. But let us now collect the ideas which were expressed earlier in this course in several lectures into a coherent form. Okay? Now, we will start with the operators. All of you are familiar with the fact that the momentum in one dimension is represented by the derivative operator tau by dou x multiplied by minus i h bar and h bar is h by 2 pi. Okay. It is a postulate in quantum mechanics. One of the postulates in quantum mechanics is that every physically measurable quantity is associated with a Hermitian operator, associated with a Hermitian operator. The strongest statement is that physically measurable quantity is associated with a self-adjoint operator, but we will avoid that. We will stay with Hermitian. And the momentum that P is equal to minus i h bar d by d x or derivative, a partial derivative if there is more than one dimension and that is of course the component in that dimension is one postulate. In fact, with that you can write pretty much all of quantum mechanics. If you accept that, it is possible to rewrite quantum mechanics with this statement. The, this implies that every quantity that we measure, so far we have looked at positions, we have calculated the average values, we have calculated the average values for momentum, we have calculated the average values for the energies. The energies there are two forms, the kinetic energy and the potential energy. These are the things we have been concerned with. We have not done much in angular momentum, but when we do spectroscopy we will need to know that. Therefore, angular momentum. Then molecular properties, dipole moment, electric, dipole moment, magnetic dipole moments of nuclei associated with nuclei and electrons electric quadrupole moment, it is a multipole moment, polarizabilities, these are measured in spectroscopy. All of these things and more polarizabilities, all these things are represented by operators in quantum mechanics. Okay. And the expectation value which we have seen before of any operator, if the system is in the state psi is given by another postulate in quantum mechanics, the integral psi star tau A psi of tau d tau. 
if psi is normalized, then we do not need the expression in the denominator. The tau is a set of variables. It can be one dimensional like it is in a particle in a box, then it is a position variable and then the limits of the integration are the box limits 0 to L or minus L by 2 to plus L by 2, whatever that is. If it is a particle in a two dimensional box, then it is the uh, set of two coordinates x and y which define the two degrees of freedom for the, for the particle. If it is a hydrogen atom, it is a set of three coordinates, the r theta phi or the x, y, z as we have done, harmonic oscillator, one coordinate. So, tau represents that and the d tau represents the element of integration that is the volume element or the area element or the length element depending on the coordinates and the limits of integration are specified by the boundaries. This is a postulate in quantum mechanics. Now, this is the second postulate. What is important is that this is the operator that is placed between the two wave functions, the complex conjugate of the wave function and the wave function itself. This is a proposal and it is possible to show that what this is how it should be written, but let us assume that as a postulate. We have already worked with such things. The other thing is that two operators, if we are trying to make measurements of two operators in the same state, then there are conditions associated with these two operators. The operators A and B must commute or the quantity A B minus B A that is the measurement in the sequence of B first and A next must give you the same result as the measurement of A first and B next. That is what this means. The difference between the two should be 0. A better way or a more comfortable way to understand this is that suppose we have a position operator for the position of the particle and we have the momentum operator for the momentum of the particle and if the state of the system is given as psi of x, okay, then what this commutator essentially means is it is x p on psi of x minus p on x psi of x. Please remember this is the measurement of p on the wave function leading to something and that will be again used for measuring the x and likewise the uh, sequence here. It is a measurement of x on the wave function and the result of that is used to make a measurement of the momentum p. The difference between the two in this case of course is not 0. Therefore, the order in which you do the measurements is going to be very critical. That is one reason why we say that the x and p do not commute or x and p cannot be simultaneously uh, accurately determined. Okay. So, the operators here are not, do not commute with each other. We have never explicitly done this calculation, but now we will do that. What is the result? x comma p on psi of x is x comma minus i h bar d by d x on psi of x and that is equal to minus i h bar which is a number, it is a constant therefore that can be taken out. What you have is x and d psi of x by d x minus, there is also a minus therefore, it is a plus i h bar okay, d by d x on x of psi of x which will give you minus i h bar x d psi by d x plus i h bar d by d x acting on x will give you 1. So, it gives you psi of x and the other would be i h bar x d psi by d x. These two cancel therefore, what is left over is i h bar psi of x. So, what you see is x on comma p 
the operation of x p minus p x on psi of x gives you i h bar times the psi of x is independent of what psi of x is. Therefore, we say that the commutator of x and p is i h bar. In fact, this is the one line statement of quantum mechanics. So, here clearly the operators do not commute with each other. Now, let us find go back to the uh, say harmonic oscillator. The harmonic oscillator Hamiltonian has two operators, the kinetic energy operator T and the potential energy operator V and the kinetic energy operator is minus h bar square by 2 m d square by d x square and the potential energy is half k x square. The commutator of T and V is not 0. Okay. Therefore, T and V cannot be simultaneously measured independently, but when you solve this equation H psi of n is equal to E n of psi n, you are obviously finding the eigenfunction for the overall Hamiltonian which is the sum of the two and the sum of the two, the eigenfunction for that is not the same as the sum of the t acting on an eigenfunction and v acting on the same eigenfunction. In fact, psi n will not be simultaneously eigenfunction for both t and v. Therefore, the non-commuting property of the operators essentially mean that the kinetic energy and the potential energy cannot be independently determined at the same time exactly, but the overall energy can be determined. Therefore, the, uh, the statement is that the kinetic energy operator and the potential energy operator do not commute with each other. Okay. Now, what is the result? What is the commutator? Remember, it is h bar square by 2 m d square by d x square and the other one is half k x square acting on some psi. Okay. Let us look at what that is. So, that gives you minus h bar square k by 4 m, it gives you the commutator d square by d x square comma x square acting on psi. Let us look at what that commutator is, d square by d x square comma x square on psi is d square by d x square acting on x squared psi minus x square acting on d square psi by d x square. Okay. Now, this is a derivative. So, first you have to do d by d x acting on x squared psi and then it is followed by d by d x. That is what is the d square by d x squared. So, if you do this, it is d by d x acting on 2x psi plus x square d psi by dx. Okay. And that gives you again when you do this uh, operation gives you 2 times psi plus 2x d psi by dx. Then d by dx acting on x square gives you 2x d psi by dx and the last term is x square giving you d square psi by d x square. This is the action of d square by d x square acting on x square psi and minus if you want to look at the commutator, it is d square by d x square comma x square psi and that you want to write it as this minus x square d square psi by d x square. And so, what you get? You get 2 psi plus 
to x sorry 4 x. Four x d psi by d x. Okay. The other gets cancelled. There is an easier way to do such commutators, but in the next in the next course you might see how to do the commutator involving uh, a square comma b as writing it as a a comma b and then finding that this is equivalent to a on a comma b plus a comma b on a. Okay. We will not do that, but the idea is that the square of the, uh, the, the potential energy term, the half kx square and the momentum, the kinetic energy term d square by dx square multiplied by minus h bar square by 2 m, they do not commute and therefore the non-commutation of operators is very important in our understanding of what is measurable, what is assignable as a property to the system and so on. So that was the purpose for giving you this quantity, this uh, definition. Now what about angular momentum? Remember in classical mechanics angular momentum is expressed as a cross product of the position vector and the momentum vector. And in three dimensions, R is expressed as x times the unit vector. So, sorry, x is the coordinate in the unit vector direction i plus y times j, if you want to write these as unit vectors, and z times k, and p is given by p x, the x component of the momentum along i plus the y component of the momentum along j and the z component of the momentum along k. And therefore, r cross p, if you recall the determinant notation for the cross product, if you write this as i, j, k, you have x, y, z, you have p x, p y, z and that is expressed as i times y p z minus z p y. It does not matter whether you write y p z or p z y because they commute with each other. The z component of the momentum and the y component of the particles positions, they are independent of each other. Therefore, you can write it this way i j x p y minus y p x and k unit vectors x p sorry this one is wrong y this one is z p x minus x p z and then you have k x p y minus uh, y p x. Okay. Now in quantum mechanics, p's are given by the partial derivative, p x is minus i h bar dou by dou x and likewise for the others. Therefore, if you have to write the angular momentum in terms of the components L x i plus L y i, these are operators now. And this i is of course is a unit vector, so you have to be, you have to remember the difference between the two. L z, the operator and this is the unit vector k and this is minus i h bar y dou by dou z minus z dou by dou y of the unit vector i minus i h bar z dou by dou x minus x dou by dou z, the unit vector j minus h bar x dou by dou y minus y dou by dou x, the unit vector k. Okay. So now you can see that this is Lx, the operator, 
this is L y the operator and this is L z the operator. Okay. A relation which I would leave it to you to prove is that L x comma L y the commutator of it is equal to I h bar L z these are operators okay. and likewise L y L z the operator is I h bar L x and L z L x the commutator of that is I h bar L y. Okay. Also remember when you write a commutator A comma B this is A B minus B A which is minus of B A minus A B and therefore, this is minus of the commutator B and A. And I have already used the fact if A a constant times B, if you take the commutator, the constant is outside, it is simply the commutator A comma B multiplied by the constant. Okay. So, these are properties and using this and the definition that the, the, the postulate that x comma p x is a h bar y comma p y is a h bar z comma p z is a h bar these are all now operators okay. therefore the i h bar is actually multiplied by the identity operator if you have to write it carefully this is the identity operator this is the identity operator okay. so with these and with the zero result comma x comma p y that commutator is zero x comma p z that commutator is zero and likewise y comma p x is zero y comma p y p z is 0 and z comma p x is 0 z comma p y is 0. With this set you can prove the angular momentum relation I mentioned here namely the, the relation L x L y the commutator between the two is the commutator of the two is I h bar L z. The commutator of L y and L z gives you I h bar L x and the commutator of L z and L x gives you I h bar L y. So, this is the angular momentum commutation relation. These are important in the uh, in spectroscopy in quantum mechanics in the study of scattering phenomena chemical reactions rotationally induced chemical dissociation, rotational phenomena in pretty much all of molecular quantum mechanics. We need to know the angular momentum and the commutation relations between the angular momentum well. You should be able to use them. So, in microwave spectroscopy lecture I will say more about it. Okay. So, these are what I would like to call as the basic uh, what are called algebraic uh, quantities that you should have in mind. The second part to this lecture is our eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Let me continue this in the next part.